There's something funky going on, I can tell you that much. Hey guys, Lene here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As I'm sure you guys have noticed, this video is going to be a little different than my past two videos. So instead of doing a makeup video, we're going to be doing a scary story time video. Um, except it's not my story, it's a very popular um, story on the interweb that I'm sure a lot of you have heard of and it's called Dear David. So for those of you who don't know what Dear David is, Dear David is a scary ghost story uh, that is supposedly true, not saying that it's not, just saying that it's claimed to be true, that was shared with the world via a thread of tweets started back in August of 2017 uh, by a gentleman named Adam Ellis. Adam shares months of tweets uh, depicting this ghost that's in his apartment uh, by the name of Dear David. We're gonna be looking at it from two different perspectives. One perspective, we're gonna be looking at it as the believer, so someone who completely believes um, what is being shared is completely true, that everything is the uh, God-given truth. And the other perspective that we're gonna be looking at this from is the skeptic, someone who doesn't believe that's true, who's trying to give it other reasons for why it's happening. And I'm not being biased on either one of those stances because I'm kind of in the middle. I'm like, it could be true, it could be false. I don't know, but let's see how, let's see what uh, reading the story uncovers. Now we're gonna dive right into the story. I'm not gonna say anything more about it. I don't wanna ruin anything, uh, but it is going to be a little bit of a longer video than even my makeup videos. So sorry about that, but it is a really, really interesting story. It is definitely spooky. So if you like spooky, stay. If you like interesting, stay. If you don't like either of those, probably not the best for you because this is going to be spooky. So this is like your one and only warning. I love you guys, but I don't want to give you a heart attack, you know? Okay, so I have the story on my screen right here, so bear with me. The first tweet was shared on Monday, August 7th, 2017. Adam starts it like this. So my apartment is currently haunted by the ghost of a dead child and he's trying to kill me. Threat. <laughs> Great start. Alrighty, he goes on to say, he started appearing in dreams, but I think he's crossed over into the real world now. The first time I saw him, I was experiencing sleep paralysis and saw a child sitting in the green rocking chair at the foot of my bed. He had a huge misshapen head that was dented in on one side. I did my best to draw it. Here's the picture that Adam shared of the child that he saw sitting in the green rocking chair. Pretty spooky. For a while, he just stared at me, but then he got out of the rocking chair and started... Oh my gosh, my hot tub just turned on. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go close my window, I'll be right back. Mm. Okay. For a while, he just stared at me, but then he got out of the chair and he started shambling toward the bed. I couldn't move because I was paralyzed. I have sleep paralysis quite often. It sucks. Right before he reached my bed, I woke up screaming. I had another dream a few nights later where I was in a library and a girl came up to me and said, you've seen dear David, haven't you? I was like, who? And she said, dear David, you saw him. She continued, he's dead. He only appears at midnight and you can only ask him two questions if you see your tape. I can't talk, apparently. He only appears at midnight and you can ask him two questions if you say Dear David first. She then added, but never try to ask him a third question or he'll kill you. I was very shaken. Having two dreams about the same thing is pretty weird. Anyway, a couple weeks passed without an incident. Then David came back in another dream. Same situation. I was in bed and he was sitting in the rocking chair near the window staring at me. In the dream, I say, Dear David, how did you die? He mumbles, an accident in a store. I say, Dear David, what happened in the store? He groans. A shelf was pushed on my head. I froze in fear. I ask, who pushed the shelf? David doesn't answer. I realize that I've asked him a third question, which I'm not supposed to do. At that point, I wake up absolutely terrified. The next couple days, I googled deaths in the city, but couldn't find anything about a kid named David dying in a store. I even tried different names. Daniel, Dylan, Devin, nothing. A few weeks go by without an incident. Sort of randomly, the apartment above mine is vacant, and I have the opportunity an opportunity to move into it. It's a larger apartment, so I'm thrilled. Another month or two goes by and I sort of forget about dear David. I think he lost track of me because I moved upstairs. But lately, something strange is happening. For the past four nights, my cats gather at the front door at exactly midnight and just stare at it, almost like something is on the other side. And here's a picture that he tags with that post of the cats um, kind of peering underneath the crack of the door. Last night, I got a weird feeling and looked out the peephole and I'm dead certain I saw movement on the other side. When I opened the door and turned on on the hallway light, nothing was there, but my cat seemed unnerved, bushy tails, etc. And that's where I am right now. Dear David found me, I think. I don't know what to do. I'll keep you updated. So those were all posted on August 7th of 2017. This is the first kind of thread 
um, from the events. Now he posts two days later uh, on Wednesday, August 9th, 2017. Um, and he continues with an update on the situation. He says, update, for the sixth night in a row, my cats were walking over to the door promptly at midnight and stared at it. And here is the picture he tagged with that. He has a clock below there. So you can see that it's midnight and then he the cat staring at the door. Oh, he's, and then he posts this video and it says, what's going on? I'm putting in headphones, hold on. Okay, that's weird. I have a cat. He'd only do that if there was somebody on the other side of the door or he wanted out of the room, which I mean, is very possible. He did just move into a new apartment, so the cat may not have been familiarized with it yet, but it was a possibility. Not saying it's not true, just saying. He goes on to say, okay, so I took a photo through the peephole because I'm too scared to open the door. I feel like I saw something. I couldn't tell, so I mustered the courage to open the door. Nothing was out there, but I took another photo. And look at this. Is it just me or is there something in the first photo, right where the banister meets the shelves hiding on the stairs? He posts this photo uh, two photos kind of back to back. He has a photo from the peephole and he has a photo from the stairwell. Now, if you look at the photo on the peephole, right there in the corner, you can see like a shadow or like a like a little lumpy head. It looks very similar to the photo that he drew. Uh, he goes on to say, I wasn't sure if it was a smudge or something, so I took a second photo from the inside. Uh, there is something out there. Okay, so he took the photo that he took from the stairwell where he thought he saw something, um, and then he took the photo that he just took from the peephole of the stairwell and he put them side by side and you can see where in the photo that he thought he saw something move you can see a, you can see the shadow or the lumpy misshapen head but in the other one you can't see anything so it's not a smudge that would be a weird smudge anyway i mean you can see that like it's not a super clean people you can see all the little like gross like meh, like scratches and stuff on the actual people so that's and it's very different from those so <sighs> <laughs> Woo! Okay. Moving on. I deadbolted the lock and got into bed because I don't know what else to do. I can still hear my cat meowing at the door. I'm pretty scared, and he has a photo here of this cat um still sitting in front of the door. Lights off off in the apartment. He's going to bed and stuff, but the cat's still sitting in front of the door, refusing to move. Okay, so all those posts were from Wednesday, August 9th. Now here's Thursday, August 10th, the next day. And he goes on to say, It's been pretty quiet tonight. I'm gonna try out a sleep talk app to see if anything happens during the night. I'm heading to bed, but the cat's are back at the door. They only do this in the middle of the night. It's routine now. And that's all he has to say for Thursday is those two posts there. Um, then the next heading is the next night and it's another video and it says here and here we go just minutes before midnight. And I think it's just the cats meowing again but let's watch the video. Oh, is he a three-legged cat? That's actually so cute. Okay, so those are not normal meows for a cat. I mean, like, every cat meows differently. But even in the last video that he posted, the cat's meows were, like, a lot more calm and didn't sound as, like, strangled. So the next post is they're both there now and it's a picture of both the cats peeping underneath the door. The next post says I don't even know if this is the right kind of salt and he posts this picture with it um, of his door and he like I guess he's really point paranoid at this point because he's taking salt and he's drawn it around the door which is it's said to say that salt keeps out bad spirits. Yes. He comments on the, the video of his cat meowing, um, just the previous one, and he says, Maxwell is very talkative tonight. He's obviously trying to tell me something. The next heading is Friday, August 11th, 2017, and he goes on to say, I used a sound app to record my apartment last night. It makes individual recordings each time it hears something. There are 33 recordings. Keep in mind he's a cat. A lot of them are probably the cats like meowing or jumping around or whatever. Most of them are pretty vague. A couple are passing cars and the, and the like, but there are three that I'm interested in. So he posts them on SoundCloud, so I'll pull them up here 
um, so you guys can hear them. Uh, but it says the first is a snapping sound that seems like a single step. It's odd because I didn't get out of bed last night. I'm gonna give it a listen. Let's hear. So yeah, it kind of hears. It sounds like a snap or a step, like you said. Um, it could have been the cats jumping around or knocking something off the table or, or whatever, but it could also be something else. I'm not sure. The next post is, um, this one is really weird because out of 33 recordings, this is the only one that has a strange electric sound throughout it. So this is one of, this is, I guess, the second of the three recordings. That absolutely could be something paranormal or creepy, but it also could just be um, if I take my phone and I just go ahead and take a video and then I rub it on like my, on my hand or like fabric in particular, um, it's going to make a similar sound. If I play the video back, so it makes a very similar like kind of a static like sound um, and that's just from my phone being rubbed on fabric. So if he has his phone like beside his bed and he like rolled over and he like brushed his hand against it or if he rubbed his like sheets against it, that very well could have made that noise. But it also again, it could be something else. Okay and then the final recording, it says this directly follows the electric static, another snap, then I groan in my sleep. So that could have caused him to like stir a bit. That's cool. That's, that's weird. His last post for the night says, those happen between two and 3 a.m. I have no explanation for them. I'll keep recording and share if I find anything curious. Uh, he posts the next day on Saturday, August 12th, 2017. Um, and he posts a picture of him doing the peace sign, a little selfie, um, saying, getting the, <laughs> getting the F, literally E-F-F, -F, out of my haunted apartment for the weekend. Uh, so that selfie is the only thing that he posted on Saturday, August 12th, uh, but he does post again two days later on Monday, August 14th, 2017. I don't know why I keep saying the date. It's not like this could be any different, but I like the, 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 the year, the year. Well, I meant not the date, because I mean the date. But... So this was posted on mo Monday, August 14th, 2017. He says, so a weird thing just happened. Take it with a grain of salt. Okay, he said, I bought a Polaroid camera this weekend because they're fun and dorky. I decided to take a few photos around my apartment. Polaroids are stupid and fun and inherently sort of creepy. I didn't expect to find anything. And for the most part, I didn't. I took a couple of my living room and bedroom, and that's the rocking chair I first saw David in. They're pretty unremarkable. Uh, so he shows these two pictures. Um, there's one of his front door where the cat kept meowing, and then there's one of the rocking chair at the end of his bed in his bedroom where he first saw uh, dear David. Now he goes on to say, then I went to the hallway and snapped a photo. The Polaroid developed completely black. Now I can tell you I have a Polaroid and that doesn't happen. I'll even prove it to you. Give me a second. This is the Polaroid my parents got me years ago for Christmas. Now if I take this out of the little, little carrying case, it's a little bit different than the one that he has. I mean, he posted a picture of his. This one my parents got me because it's, it's meant more for like, like actual photography. And at that time I was like really, really into photography. So my parents got me this one because it has like more settings that I can play around with, which is super nice of them. Okay, so I'm just gonna take like a photo of my room with this Polaroid and you're, you'll see. I can turn it on. Maybe it's dead actually. I didn't even think about that. I use this thing in like a hat. Ooh, hello. What does he yell at me? I don't, I haven't used this in so long. Oh, these are so cute. Look at these little batteries. They're like, maybe like accidentally left it on. Okay, nonetheless, taking a picture of the Polaroid, I mean, these were from blurry photos that I took when I was in, in Africa. Even if they're like blurry or out of focus, they still develop with color and they still develop like as if you, you know, just took a blurry photo with your phone and then showed it. Like it, they don't develop completely black. They do have like the black film on the back and it's like, they still don't develop completely black. I've had a few develop like completely white, but that's also because I didn't put them in correctly. But they don't develop completely black. Like if I go in here, oh, just kidding, that's empty. Oh no, it's not. There's one in there. Damn. That is what the Polaroid looks like. It's like red when it's undeveloped, or it's like white if it doesn't develop properly. But it never goes completely black. Like for it to go completely black, I'd have to like put my finger over the lens and take a picture. Like it doesn't go completely black naturally. So the fact that his went completely black is very strange and something that I can't explain. All right, he goes on to say, I even ripped open, he did the same thing. 
is that I even ripped open and destroyed a fresh pack to see if it was just an undeveloped Polaroid, but they start out white. So something I also didn't say when I pulled this out is that if you look inside, you can see that gray strip inside the actual Polaroid and that's this part on the back. So the red part itself is the back of it and that's where the chemicals are like smushed. Yeah. Look up Polaroids and how they actually work. Now they come out white if they're undeveloped like he shows in this photo. They don't come out black. Like if it's completely black it's because it's used ink and because that is what it captured if that makes sense. And then he goes on to say, I also thought maybe I accidentally covered the lens with my finger, so I took a photo while intentionally covering it. The photo on the left is me covering the lens with my finger, and the photo on the right is my fully lit hallway taken just after midnight. You can see there's a huge difference. The one where he puts his finger over, it's kind of like grainy. And like, I've taken photos where I've stuck my finger in front of it, and like, even that, it's like red, because I mean, flash the flash it's red it never comes out just black he goes on to say i feel like i'm saying that a lot but me yeah. he goes on to say this could be nothing I'm not sure what to make of it okay one last thing because i wanted to double check here's a couple of videos of me taking photos and he shows this video here okay here's my living room that there um the next video it says and then the, and then the hallway okay now i'm gonna take a photo of the hallway just to show you <laughs> he's got the deadbolt he's got the chain he's got the lock in the what door like, like. Here go, so he pulls out his polaroid takes a picture of the hallway fully lit as we can all see He just takes Polaroid out of the camera. Again, and starts you white. See the first one and six the side. Developed. So let's see what this one does. And he's waiting for it to develop. You can already tell it's going dark it's again. It's going to take a minute. But it is developing black. Yeah, it's developing completely black. So I don't know. So as you saw when he took the pol when they took the photos um, using his Polaroid, the photos start out white, and even when the camera spits them out, they're white. And then you can see the second one there as it developed, um, it went black, which means it's using ink. It's using like the chemical. So Polaroids, it's essentially like a chem there's chemicals in between the two pieces, and then it again, look it up. <laughs> I don't know the whole logistics of it. I'm not one to listen to, but they come out white, and if they're coming out any color other than white, it means it's using ink. If it wasn't developing, if for some reason his camera just decides to spit out every other photo white, like undeveloped, it would come out white. It wouldn't come out black. So that is very strange. I don't have any explanations for that. Yeah, <laughs> I have no explanations for that. He goes and posts the photo once it's completely developed and he says it came out totally black again for a second time. So for those of you who don't know, I have a Christian. So if this is where I'm going to like substitute it for something else. So he goes on to say, honestly, I don't know why I'm still goofing around with this camera. There might be a logical explanation. Someone told me to take photos from further away. So I tried that once with my iPhone and once with the Polaroid. The left one is from my phone and the right is from the Polaroid. The hallway light was on both times. Why is it pitch black each time with the Polaroid? That is like I don't like that at all. This poor guy. Holy crud muffin. So yeah, as you can see the photos in the left one, the hallway light is clearly on. You can see all the way down the hallway. Absolutely no problem. You know, standard photo of a dude's hallway outside of his apartment. But then the right one, which is the one of the Polaroid, is like Everything is developed properly except the hallway. That is messed up as, as far as I know and from my experience of using my own Polaroid, like it doesn't differentiate light like that. Like it doesn't have to have like the right lighting to, to 
to adjust properly. I mean, yes, if you're in like broad daylight, it's gonna be like overexposed and stuff. And if you're in like a dark room, it's gonna be underexposed. That's a given. But like the hallway is better lit than his apartment is. Like you should be able to see that or anything. It should be overexposed, not completely black. That's from the standpoint of the believer. Skeptics at a loss for this. I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what that could be. I really don't. And it's not like you can edit a Polaroid. I don't know. All right. He goes on to say this whole thread has been really convoluted. I'm sorry if it's hard to follow. I just thought this was really weird and wanted to share. The next day he goes on to say, folks have been urging me to get some sage. So I did. And he posts this picture of him saging his apartment, um, which is the act of waving sage that is lit and then blown out. So it's like smoking around your apartment. And it's, it's supposed to like cleanse the space of like, unwanted spirits um again i don't know you as in the paranormal world it is meant to cleanse a area or house or whatever of unwanted spirits is what it's used for i don't know i've never used it i don't really know about all that stuff. I just know what people believe it to do. He also saged the hallway. So he says saging the hallway um, and definitely saging the heck out of this rocking chair. <laughs> and he posts uh, two pictures, him saging the hallway and him saging the creepy rocky chair, rocky chair, rocky chair, rocky chair, rocking chair, where he first met dear David in his dream and outside of his dream. He goes on to say, honestly, sage doesn't seem like it'll help much, but I'm open to anything. I barely slept last night. I kept waking up feeling like something was wrong, but who knows, maybe this will do something. The morning after the first post he says is sage didn't work. I haven't dreamt about David in a few months, but he appeared again last night. In the dream, my bedroom was filled with hazy smoke, but I could see David sitting in the chair across the room. He was smaller this time, almost shrunken, but he didn't do or say anything except look at me. It feels like a bad omen. That's freaky. It's like the sage did the opposite, like kind of piss off dear Dave. And he was like, you thought you got rid of me, but here I am. And, he, and then he like had the smoke in the dream to be like, hmm, you thought wrong. You know, he was just kind of like rubbing it in his face. For those of you who don't know, a bad omen is pretty much a sign that something bad is going to happen. Is pretty much what a bad omen is. The next set of posts is from Friday, August 18th, 2017. Obviously, your hasn't changed. And the first post that he has is it's been two weeks and he still does this every night at midnight. And it's pictures of his cat again sitting in front of the door like he started doing two weeks ago. He says other weird stuff has been happening too. I've been recording myself sleeping and it picks up this weird static electricity sound every night at 3 a.m. It lasts for about five minutes. This morning I woke up to the whole house shaking. It felt like a small earthquake. I debated even mentioning this on Twitter because it sounds made up but I distinctly felt the house swaying. It's just a whole bunch of small things happening at once. I feel so uneasy, like right before a thunderstorm comes. Everyone is telling me to move, but I don't have any guarantee that this won't follow me. And that's the last post that he has for that day. The next night he goes and he posts this th severe thunderstorm warming, warning, <laughs> not warming, warning. I don't know what that is, but warning. And he says they just issued a thunderstorm warning for tonight. I keep saying warming. It's not warming. It's warning, 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 warning. I think we got it. And then he posts another picture of the city sky. He says everyone in the city is talking about how weird the sky looks. I can hear it rolling thunder in the distance. I mean, I personally think that's pretty. I'd probably be freaked out if that was my sky right now, but I think it's pretty. <laughs> then the next day he posts is Monday, August 21st, 2017. Um, and he says all this ghost stuff has been spooky, but this past weekend, it was the first time I actually felt unsafe in my home. So it's escalating. He goes on to say, on Friday night, there was supposed to be a huge thunderstorm. In the end, it passed, but the night was bizarre anyway. I fell asleep pretty early. I was incredibly tired for some reason. I had a dream that night where David was dragging me by the arm through an old abandoned warehouse. I'm not sure why I didn't fight back in the dream or how he was strong enough to pull me, but that's dream logic for you. It was a creepy dream, but I didn't think much of it when I woke, when I woke up in the shower, uh, when I woke up in the shower. <laughs> no, nope, not what that says. <laughs> it was a creepy dream, but I didn't think much of it when I woke up. I took a shower and then I had noticed something. I had woken up with a huge bruise on my arm. That is a bruise of significant size. I mean, I don't know what his whole setup bed wise is. I mean, he may have whapped his arm on his bedside table, but it looks like it's like too wide to be just like the corner of a bedside table. He said, now look, maybe I injured myself the day before and my arm was hurting during the night, which manifested in the dream. There could be a totally logical explanation for this. So I brushed it off. I went to get coffee as I do every weekend. When I walk to the coffee place, I always pass a food cart repair, 
When I walk to the coffee place, I always pass a food cart repair depot. It's always incredibly busy, especially on weekends. I've lived in the neighborhood for over four years and the place has always been jam-packed with carts getting serviced. But today, it was completely abandoned. The whole warehouse was totally gutted and empty. Well, almost empty. I went inside to look around because I was astonished that this place was suddenly empty after all these years. Basically, the only thing in the entire warehouse was a single green chair. Sorry! And here's a photo of that. If you recall, David first appeared in my green rocking chair. It could be nothing, but it's weird that this is the only thing left behind. On my way back from coffee, the warehouse had been shuttered. It's remained shuttered since. Pretty much it was open long enough for Adam to walk in and see the green chair, and then it was closed and has been closed since. That is... All kinds of spooky. No. He said the chair, my bruise, dreaming about an empty warehouse, and then passing by one, it gave me the creeps. Needless to say, I didn't sleep much that night. Too much strange things have been happening and more frequently. So I don't know. Anyway, it was a strange weekend. Um, he then posts a couple more on Friday, August 25th, 2017. Obviously, it hasn't changed. I don't know. I feel the need to say it every time, but the more you know. It says, there have been a few small developments in my apartment, but I'm not really sure what to make of it. I just know I'm scared. If you recall, my cats usually gather at my door at midnight, but lately it's been getting earlier and earlier every night. I was almost used to routine, so when they started crying at the door closer to 10 p.m., I was I was confused. They began a new routine. Hover around the door at 10 p.m., cry for about 15 minutes, then wander off as if nothing was wrong. But this week, something else has been happening. Shortly after the usual cat stuff, around 10.30 or so, I start getting phone calls from an unmarked number. My entire call history for the past week looks like this. You'll notice that I've only answered once yesterday. So here is the picture of his call list, just no color ID, no color ID, no color ID, and it's multiple times throughout the day, it looks like. Either this guy is like popular and getting like random calls from a whole bunch of no color ID people, people or it's just the same person just calling over and over and over again oh my gosh since it's been happening for days on end i thought it might be an automated tele telemarketer or something usually if it's an automated thing if you answer once they'll quit calling so i picked up instead what i heard on the other side was a particular electrical static sound very similar to the static my sleep app picks up at night i didn't say anything i just listened waiting for an uh, automated message to chime in after a minute the static stopped and there was silence i kept listening i heard what i thought was breathing but it was so faint that I couldn't hear. My heart was racing, so, I, so it was hard to hear. Then just as I was about to hang up, I heard a small... Then just as I was about to hang up, I heard a small, a very small voice whisper, hello. Ah, uh, no! <laughs> oh, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. Oh, shoot and darn it. Hello. No, no, no. If someone did that to me, I would burn my phone. Okay, so it goes on to say something about the way that they said hello freaked me out. It wasn't a question or a greeting, just hello, a flat statement, so quiet I could barely hear it. I panicked and hung up. I didn't know what else to do. I closed all the curtains in my apartment and turned on every single light. I watched TV until dawn because I was too scared to go to sleep. I sort of feel like I'm losing my mind. If I look at each- <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, oh my gosh. That scared me. Sorry, I'm like right below, like this is, I'm in the basement and like right above me is like my kitchen and I guess my mom just like moved a chair, but if it's like on the ground when it moves, it's like <laughs> That didn't make, that, that didn't sound like that. If I look <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, it's just little on me, your weird sound maker. <laughs> Anyway, if I look at each individual incident on its own, there are perfectly logical explanations for everything. But after three weeks of crap happening, I don't know how to make sense of it all. The only thing I feel like I can do right now is write everything down. So that's what I'm doing and that's what I'll keep doing. So the, all these posts were from Friday. Now the weekend's passed and it is Monday again. On Monday, August 28th, he starts a new thread and he said, so I moved the green chair out of my bedroom weeks ago. It's been in various parts of the living room ever since. Thread. I should probably get rid of it, but I'm not sure that would have any effect. Also, I'm going on vacation to J Japan in three weeks, and I keep thinking if I can make it to my trip, this will all end, as dumb as that sounds. Uh, David lost track of me once when I moved, so maybe if, I, if he believes that I've left the apartment again, he'll leave me alone. Anyway, so last week I bought a pet monitoring camera so I can keep an eye on the cats while I'm overseas. It's basically a nanny cam that connects to the Wi-Fi so you can check it whenever you want. It runs 24-7. Uh, it also alerts you to sound and movement via an app. I blacked out the company since I doubt that they want to be associated with ghosts. So he posts this picture of the um, app or of his screen with the alerts that pop up, but it says motion detected from blank, sound detected from blank. And then he goes on to say, in any event, I decided to test it out this weekend. I was away from home one night, so I set up the camera 
before I left. My phone pinged periodically throughout the evening, alerting me to the cats running around and playing normal stuff. Then around 11, it alerted me again and it detected motion. But when I checked the feed of my apartment, I didn't see anything. So I watched the feed again. Still nothing. I watched it. It's. I dropped my finger. Hold on. My finger. I dropped my ring. So I watched the feed again. Still nothing. I watched it a third time and finally noticed something. Watch the chair. So he posts this video of his living room focus and he tells us to focus on the chair. That's rocking. I'm like, I'm partially scared this is gonna be a jump scare. You can you can clearly see the rocking chair rocking back and forth and it looks like it's being swayed like fairly aggressively. I got chills. I knew it can be with the wind because I haven't had the windows open all summer. I have AC and I like to keep it chilly. It was unnerving, but there wasn't anything I could do about it right then. So I flipped my phone off and tried not to panic. About half an hour later, I got another motion alert. Here's a feed from that alert. Here's another video that he posts on here. Hold on, was there something at the top there? Oh, he had something like pinned to the wall that just f fell. So I don't know if you guys saw that, but there was a clock that was above the bookshelf, like mounted to the wall or a clock or a, or a plaque or something. And it fell onto the bookshelf. He goes on to say, if you missed it the first time, like me, look above the shelf. It's a little turtle shell that I hung on the wall. I said, yeah, yeah, yes, I know it's weird to own a turtle shell, but my family lives in Montana and I picked up last year at a native training post. Here's a picture of him holding the shell, which he had mounted to his wall. That's the thing that fell onto the bookshelf. He goes on to say, since I've been back home, I've been too nervous to turn the camera back on and today has been pretty quiet that said i feel really uneasy up with the chair in the hall i hope nothing else happens tonight then he posts tuesday september 5th so like multiple days later and it looks like there's a new thread and his first post is it's happening again and then he goes on to say i've been leaving the nanny cam on 24 7 and records every time there's movement or sound as you know i was going over the feed from the weekend and noticed some weird stuff during the night on saturday while i slept i recorded the cats in the living room it seemed pretty unremarkable at first but then after a few minutes Maxwell freaks out and jumps over something invisible. So Maxwell's the three-legged cat I think Okay, if I'm not crazy, I mean, yeah, he definitely does jump over something because he looks back at where he jumped over and it looks like he's looking towards the door. Like he jumps, he freaks out, jumps over this thing, looks back over and then looks at the door or he looks at the door first and then he looks towards where he jumped. Oh my gosh, the mason jar on the counter moves. I don't think, okay, I don't think he caught that, but I'm sure other people caught that. The mason jar on the countertop i don't know if you guys are missed that so i'm just gonna play the clip again but like watch the mason jar it, like twists and moves down the counter a little bit so yeah his cat definitely freaks out and jumps over something but the mason jar moves too because you can tell the cat looks directly at the at the mason afterwards like did you just move? Did I just see that? Then he goes on to say, I don't think it was a bug or anything. Maxwell doesn't react like that with bugs. He just eats them. <laughs> Something spooked him. What's more, I almost never get bugs. I've seen maybe three in all the years I've lived here. Anyway, the next night, the camera recorded a couple more strange videos. So he does not comment on the, the, the mason jar on, on the table at all. Okay, if you guys notice, and I'm not going crazy, please just put in the comments and be like, yeah, I saw it too, because like, I might be crazy for all we know. The next post that he has is, anyway, the next night, the, recorder, the camera recorded a couple more strange videos. Specifically, it recorded Maxwell doing this on and off for hours. So you can see, if you look at the photo you can see on the couch maxwell is sitting up straight just kind of like sitting on the edge of the couch which i mean my cat doesn't do i know some cats do but mine definitely doesn't do that um and since he's kind of weirded out by it i'm assuming his cat doesn't do that either he'd sit up on his hind legs and peer around the room as if looking for something or someone oh that's not what it says 
<laughs> he stood up on his hind legs and peered around the room as if looking for something or looking at something. This is odd behavior for him and I can't come up with any explanation for it, especially because of the next video. So he posts another video from this nanny cam and it says, here's the final video the camera recorded that night. That's strange. I mean, that one looks more like he's kind of swatting out a bug. Yeah, the next post he says, I suppose there's a chance it was a fly, but I honestly never get flies. So that seems pretty unlikely. Like he said, he doesn't get a whole lot of bugs. So if that wasn't a bug, that's freaky. Especially since he was kind of like leaning forward and almost looked like he was almost like leaning on something. He goes on to say, I just can't shake the feeling that something has made its way into my apartment. It's odd behavior for Maxwell in any event. Things feel off this week. I can't explain it. Then the next time he posts is September 16th, Saturday, September 16th. He starts a new thread and his first post is, I've been having so many nightmares lately. They're way more intense than my usual dreams too. I don't know if it's because I'm stressed or if it's something else. This afternoon I took a nap and had a dream that I haven't been able to shake. In the dream, I was laying in bed and I rolled over to face the other direction. On the pillow next to me was a severed head with a bloody spine attached, snaking down the bed. What? I, huh? That is like my worst fear of like being in bed and rolling over and seeing something there like no and then he goes on to say the head was staring at me somehow still alive it has it had this huge smile plastered on its face horrified i screamed what happened to you the head smiled even bigger it feels great the head it feels great the head groaned after that i woke up it was dark outside then everything was quiet other dreams have been just as strange things like dark figures standing in my windows uh, even though i live on the second floor stuff that makes no sense in relation to what i've been experiencing in real life after that dream about the head i've been feeling uneasy all night i couldn't stop thinking about it i decided to go for a walk if for no other reason than to get out of my apartment i went a few blocks away to get a snack on the way i had to pass a warehouse that was boarded up a few weeks ago it's actually on the way to everything i pass it twice a day just to get to the subway i hurried past it since it still freaks me out i got some doritos and a seltzer then made my way back home when i passed the warehouse the second time i heard a dull thunk from the other side of the shutters i froze in place but there was no other sound after that i probably should have just continued on but curiosity got the better of me there was a grated window next to the doors about a foot above my head too high to see into so i thought to myself okay i'm gonna hold my phone up to the window and take one photo and then run for my life i made sure the flash was on positioned my phone lens threw under the grates and snapped a photo i almost thought i saw movement when the flash went off but i couldn't be certain the light bounced off the grates and was pretty blinding i couldn't even look at the photo i just ran all the way home i was too jumpy to look at it for a while i just ate my doritos nervously when i finally did look at the photo here's what i saw it seems to be a different part of the warehouse maybe an office there was a bunch of old insulation what looked like a filing cabinet and a ripped open leather desk chair uh so this is the photo that he posted of that office space that he just talked about and you can see i mean like looking at the photo kind of freaks me out i don't know why but you can see like the bottom kind of left you can see like the ripped open leather chair you can see the insulation kind of against like laying against the arm um you can see a door in the corner and a lamp almost kind of looks like a silhouette in the back but i'm just i'm 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 getting jumpy it's fine no no i'm not i'm not getting jumpy he thought the same thing he goes on to say then i noticed something else in the upper right corner something looked like a face the more i stared at it, the more it looked like a nondescript blur but i can't even be sure what i'm seeing maybe i'm too deep into this and my brain wants to see david when he's not there but here i mess with the filters on my phone a bit tell me this doesn't look like him and then this is the photo that he posts oh my gosh like you can almost see like the hair and like the dent and then like, the face no oh my gosh friday september 22nd is when he posts again uh which is actually a day after my sister's birthday so look at that but he goes on to say that the past few days have been fairly quiet i haven't been spending much time at home i leave for japan in just a couple of hours japan i said that weird i leave for japan in a couple of hours i've been trying to avoid anything weird before my trip i still feel like this all might stop if i just leave for a couple of weeks whatever happens i just want to thank everyone for their kind thoughts and concerns this whole ordeal has been very stressful and it means a lot it makes me feel like i'm not going through this alone see you in a couple of weeks okay so this seems like a good place to stop um i will have to do a part two because i completely forgot about how long this was i thought we could do it in like half an hour 45 minutes but it's been like 
a couple hours. There will be a part two, so make sure you smash that like button if you want to see part two. And if you like videos like this where I just kind of tell scary stories, make sure you let me know. And yeah, thanks so guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and we will see you back with part two. Bye.